What's up guys, Evergreen Fly Guy. I got a fly tying video for you today. I know it has been a while since I have done one. Um, I've been busy. I've been doing the traditional bass stuff. You guys can see that right there at the kayak. Pardon my bags of clothing. Oh geez, trying to zoom. But yeah, been playing with the kayak. Saw the uh, camping video. If you follow my channel, you saw the camping video. I uh, had a lot of fun with that. We, I actually brought the kayak, but we didn't. We wound up not taking it out. The river was a little too choppy. Um, I'm like to do some more of that. Maybe we'll do be doing some fly fishing this weekend. I got to see what my schedule looks like. Worst case scenario is I'll go out and miss some trout. But uh, that's the reason for the no, no flies lately. Um, let me show you what we're breaking. Ones. I'm kind of doing this backwards. But um, we're basically doing a articulated bait fish. We've got our articulated shanks and our eyes there, but in a marabou. And uh, yeah, it's just cool. I did this one, I'm calling this like a crappy. It's like a little bit of black and gray. I'm calling this one the baby bass because it's dark green and gray, so why not, you know? Let's get into it, guys. Okay, guys, save on time. I've already got one of these um, fish skull articulated shanks. They're all, uh, what is that, 20 millimeter? They're all 20 millimeter. I thought I got a different, like, little pack of it. I might have, um, and I've just misplaced it somewhere, but these are fine for this. I'm going to apologize because I'm reshooting this video because my footage got corrupted, but it's okay. Um, let me show you the previous ones we did. We did this guy. These are, I'm calling these the crappy pattern ones. I got a little dried glue right there. I'm calling these the crappy pattern ones because they're like gray minnow with a little black in there. We got the stinger hook on the back side still, and we got a little pearl flash in there. Um, same thing with this one. I just, I did two of these. Um, you know, you could trim them how you want, and then we have those living fish skull eyes. We're basically going to do the same thing with this one. Um, but we're going to use this dark green, and it's the same thing. It's the Exelect, Exelect Hairline Marabou. This is just dark olive. I had light green olive, um, and I thought about using it, but I think we're going to do like a baby bass type pattern for this guy right here. And I think the dark green is going to work just a little bit better than the light green, the lighter green olive. The light green olive... If I was going to use it, I would probably cater it toward more like a smallmouth or maybe like a, a rock bass, possibly even like a bluegill pattern-ish. Um, what I did there is I just tied that feather into the back end. These have pretty thick stems, so like this one just came out. So here, and I just grab the tip and kind of wrap it around. Um... I try to kind of stack it in pretty tight on top of each other and pull back as I'm going. I do this basically every time I use anything for marabou because your marabou is, it's usually pretty plentiful on a blood quill and it gets sucked in on itself pretty easy. So if you keep pushing it back as you go, I find that it uh, kind of unfurls it a little better than trying to unfurl it once you've got it like tied down. I'm just keeping going all the way up here to the tip here. Tip of this hook here. I'll go ahead and grab my thread here and tie it off and tie it in. So whenever I get up to the to the eye of the hook or the shanks here, I always wrap back on it. Because one, it's gonna lock everything in place a lot better. Two, it kind of establishes a little bit better where your shanks can meet. All right, and got everything pushed out of the way. That's looking good so far. I'm gonna take my whip finish tool here. Oh gosh. Sorry guys, I'm still getting used to using this one. This one's my new one, it's my... I'll just put like two or three right there, tighten it up. Trim this off. Um, I'm not going to put cement here. I would recommend you put cement here if you're going to be working on this for a while. But for time purposes, there's going to be no cement here. Because I just want to move on to the next stage and show you guys without taking a really long video. 
So I'm just taking another one of these hook shanks and I'm just gonna, I'm leaving it in the vise for this part because it makes it a little easier. Pop it through, just like that. Then we're just gonna back it up. I'm gonna flip this upside down for this part right here to keep that stinger hook positioned how I want it. Clamp on that down. If these are getting in your way, take wet your fingers a little bit. Or you can do some wax, do spit, whatever. <laughs> if you don't mind it, doesn't matter. Because this stuff is bushy, very bushy. Now, you have that stinger. All right guys, so I'm just pulling that back. Like I said previously, watch out for that hook because it's gonna start coming into play more right now, wiggling around on you. And I'm using the Kamigatsu size two, little octopus hook, stinger hook, whatever you wanna call it. It is incredibly sharp. It will poke you really good. I barely tapped it whenever I was doing one of the previous ones and it went pretty good into my finger. It hurt a lot. So we're gonna just keep going, keep going. Little thread bed through here. I like to try to cover up this little angle. I try to like make like a little sloop up because I, I think it's a little, sh little pokey outish. If you don't want to take the time to do that, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just how I like to do it. Pull that down, clip that off. I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and try to pull out another decent quill that I can work with and uh, get rid of that chunky stem to it, size it how I need it. Tie it in on the bottom, same thing as we did previously to the other ones. Just tie it in real good and tight. that really real tight so you can turn it easier park the thread up here out of the way Let's see if I can get you guys a little closer there we go I grab I always grab just the tip tip of this right here around here again wrap around around keep on wrapping like I said I like to pull my stuff back as I'm wrapping there we go we're getting it there wrap 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 And I'm going to go one more time. I'm just going to crank down here and twist it up out of the way. Crank down, back on it. good right there. Get my whip finish tool ready. Put a couple on that. Seal that off. Cut that excess. I'm actually going to take just a little bit of head cement I'm using the uh, hairline head cement. I love this stuff. I'm actually just going to put a little dab on there. Dab on the side. Try not to get any fibers caught, but it happens. 
because I only did it that side because I'm going to take this off for just a minute. And we're going to put it over here to the side and come back for it. Um, we're going to grab our streamer hook. So this is a size 2 streamer hook and I actually have a uh, little living uh, fish skull fish head on it. This is an old one I had. I actually just found it. Um, I didn't do the previous with previous ones with this, so um, I don't know how well it'll turn out. We're gonna do it together, and hopefully it looks good. <laughs> um, but we're just gonna set up right now for it. Turn it a little bit. There you go. And we're gonna tie us a fly on here, or try to at least. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to position this head how I want it. Like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with these. Cut off that. And just go back on here like I would with the other ones. With the other ones you saw, I kind of just uh, stuck it on the side with the uh, Sorry, I just kind of stuck it on the side, the the, eye, the living eyes on the side there with some glue, but uh, I think the head will actually come out being a little better, and the head doesn't seem like it's weighted too much, so I think that's going to be a good thing, it, you know, it feels pretty light. positioned right in there. So next step is I have a little bit of intruder wire. You don't need a very long length to it and I'm actually gonna run this on the side kind of pressing up into the to the head here. And I'm just gonna, gonna tie that in and I like to run mine just down the side. You can do it however you want to get it on there. Um, some people say that if you don't have it, if you have it like kind of wonky all over the shake It'll throw off how the streamer fishes. That might be true. Personally, I haven't seen a difference. I just like to err on the side of caution and do it like this. Not to mention it just looks better, in my opinion. Now I'm also going to grab a, uh, a bead head. Uh, I think this is like an eighth bead, bead head. That you'd put on like the end of a... Decently sized woolly bugger. If you can see that, sorry. I know it's the focusing's not too great tonight. Apologize, the focus is not too great tonight. But uh Yeah, so how I'm gonna do this is I just take it and I slip it up the back side of this wire here. One side goes up. We'll rest right there a minute. Now we're going to go back here and we're going to grab our other piece. Make sure your streamer, your stinger hook is up or down, whichever way you want it. I like mine down. And uh, take it and then uh, you want to take it right back through the back side of that bead head. And then I position my wire just running up the all other side there. We're going to run it up by that fish head there. I actually have a little bit too much wire, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this out of my way. And see where I want it. And kind of try to tie it in like that. Yeah, that'll work. So I still have it on the side, but I'm going to take my, my excess wire here because I had a little bit too much with an old pair of scissors. And I'm going to trim that. If you got wire cutters, it probably work better. I don't have wire cutters, so I'm making do. Even that, to me, seems like it might be a little bit too long, but we'll see once I get all the thread down. 
and I'm going to wrap back just to secure this line in here this wire in here sorry we're going to twist all that up through there get it all this keeps trying to move over on me hold on I'm going to back up a little bit Well, you know what, that's fine. As long as it's in one space, it should be fine. Just right down that spine there. Now I'm going down. Watch your hook tip, hook tip there. You do not want to snap your line right in here. It's such a pivotal point. It would not be fun. Trust me, I've been there. I've done it. It's not fun. Going back up, I'm going to set the fish skull in place one more time. <laughs> Just wondering if there's like a way to like really get in there with this. I don't know if there is, other than like kind of moving it around like in there like that. That does seem to be helping a little bit. Like I said, not very familiar with fish skulls. Want to get a little? I want to get better with them. Or fish heads, whatever you want to call them, little metal heads. There. I don't know the exact name. Just know it was the last one I had of. of like a four four pack something like that it's not very many and I got that snare hook in my finger once again again something that is not fun all right now we're back in business if I can get this guy to stay out of the way here uh, let me try like hanging it with that tie it in real good and tight Don't be afraid to smush some of that stuff down to get it out of your way if it's getting in your way like it is me. Alright. Take my stuff up here and stay out of the way of the folding. Gosh, where did this go? There it is. Oh, was it? There it is. Okay. And you don't have to, I like to be pretty tight for this part because um, I'm going to be adding in a few other parts and I just want enough room to be left. So I'm going to be kind of, kind of folding it in tight through here, which you'll see. And this first one, I like to basically take up about halfway on the, on the hook shank. So I think that's good. My bobbin's a little too, a little too long. Tighten it up here, so I can get in here and tighten this up. Same thing. Just I'm cranking back on on it to tighten it up. There we go. I think that'll be enough. I just kind of moved my bobbin out of the way for a second, but we're going to be going back down because uh, step number one I like to do here, I like to add a little flash. This is Pearl Flash, it's just White River brand Pearl Flash. I take about two strands of it. If I can get it all good, good looking here, I lay it. I just stretch the two strands over the middle right there. I come back in with the bobbin, trying to stay out of the way of my fibers. Oh gosh, this is a mess through here. An absolute mess through here. And I tie it in as best I can. And then I take, uh, I try to find each side, two strands come back tie it in that way if you can to just kind of fit it to the side then I go ahead and while I have it in my hand I trim up to fit the tail and uh, you can stroke it and position it in how you want it
Okay, I'm gonna clip those two out. I'll sort those into the marabou as I see needed. At this point, I'm gonna grab some of my uh, black marabou, marabou quills here and uh, pull a few out. These are smaller quills and it's actually perfect for what we need. Uh, because uh, these spots I don't want to be too big. I just want them to look like little bass stripes basically or bass spots, doesn't matter. If it's a spotted or a largey I don't think they're gonna perforate. And so I take it to the side right here and I tie it in on the side. And I have a nice black spot on that side. Find another quill about the same size. Cut it to fit how you want. I think, let me see if that's about the same size. I believe it is. Don't have to be perfect because, uh, you know, bass, bass, their spots and stripes ain't always the same. At least that I've noticed. Alright. Is that where I want it? And you can kind of move it around just by taking your fingers like that, just pinching and twisting. And we'll do it. Now uh, we're going to tighten up through here. Tighten all that up right there. See if I can mess with this fish skull a little bit more. Get it tight. Show you the right side up. Oh, I think we did. Yep. Okay. Go crank back down to get ready for our next quill, which should be our last quill. Can't get a hold of that little fiber, there it goes. All right. So, last, last one. Um, you be your own judge for this and you see, and just kinda see how much you think you're gonna need. Uh, because mine, you know, it, it doesn't look like it needs too big of one. I got a pretty decent, pretty decent shank there. But, uh, you never know, so we'll see. I don't know how it'll, how it's going to unfold once it actually gets up here to the fish skull, so we'll see that as well. Alright, so I got my quill here. And same thing we've been doing. I'm going to give it a pretty good amount right there and tie in on the underside. Get it all real tight so it'll twist easy. I'm going to fix the skull back once again. <laughs> Wait, is that right? I can't tell. I can never tell with this thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Just set it up here, I guess. So we know we're feathering it together very well. And same thing as we've been doing. You can kind of keep it a little looser there if you think you don't got enough quill as you're turning. I'm sure I do. So I'm going to keep mine fairly tight one after another probably. Just right in like that. After another, one after another, all the way up. Keep trying to keep this fish skull in place. Kind of try to get it up in the skull as best you can. Real tight in there. Twist it through it. Have your hook come undone. Just kidding, don't do that. It's not fun. Okay. 
And I'm going to take my thread through it, over to the sides and around it, just twisting because that's going to lock in that marabou in there. Then I'm going to come up here, tie down right in there. Now I'm going to try to unfurl this, get it to peek through a little bit. Take my little pen here, my little bobbin thing. Not bobbin, sorry. Just trying to get some of that out of there so it lines up a little better. All right, I think that's probably as good as it's going to get. I'm going to put a little more thread here. I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this guy off. that um, now we're gonna be doing all of our cement stuff so I'm actually gonna go ahead and find my eyes here and get ready so I'm using the, the fish skull living eyes ice it looked really good on the the crappy and present uh, presentation ones it might not look so hot on this just because it's you know supposed to be like more like a bass thing but I think it'll be okay I'm just getting a good amount of glue around this here try to hold that head in place a little better since it's not it's kind of wonky on the back and then I'm gonna put a little glue where the eye holes are right there just a little dab and there these living eyes they're also sticky backed so it's pretty simple to get them matched up and stuff They might not fit perfectly, but as long as you get the glue on there and put them in, it's not really an issue. I'm just gonna put that right there, best I can. My finger is super sticky for whatever reason. I guess I got glue on it a minute ago. I'll try to push that where it needs to be. There we go. So that's going to dry for a couple minutes. Um, I'm actually going to make sure all the glue is good around this guy. Just put a little dab on the bottom here. I'll get back to you guys in just a minute. Okay guys, let's take a look a little closer. Here we have it at the head. The eyes, they're a little too big for the, the skull, but it still fits on. Stinger hook on the back. And uh, when we get to the outro, I'll get, give you guys some better shots of them. So just one second.